because strength training is so important but then I feel like a lot of people as they get older they get worried about you know hurting their back or they've got aches and pains and that sort of thing so they're like I'm not going to go and lift heavy weights like that'll absolutely ruin me but then you have this kind of cycle that it's so important for the longevity of your limbs the longevity of your muscles to have that strength to have your core so you can stand up and there's an amazing kind of montage of video going about, you know, I lift these weights so that I can stand out of a chair when I'm older or I can walk up the yeah. stairs and lift the shopping. It's not just so you're going to go and become, you know, Miss Universe in a beauty contest of weightlifting. It's so that you can actually have the independence throughout your life. But if someone's ca perhaps carrying a little bit more weight and they think, OK, I, I understand this, this weight training thing but is it actually going to show any results or do I need to pair cardio with that? How can people have that weight loss journey? What would your recommendations be? So I always look at it from a, more of a three-prong approach where we look at what are the, quote, big rocks. So if they're on a weight loss journey, we really have to look at sleep and we have to dial in sleep because you're not going to get any kind of metabolic change or control if your sleep is not good. So like a sleep hygiene, the quality of the sleep, and work on that. And then the first thing that we do is we phase people into understanding resistance training. So it's not like I'm going to take someone who's never been in the gym before and say, okay, today we're going to do 100 kilo deadlifts. I'm going to see how they move. I'm going to see how comfortable they are, what they feel about resistance training. Do they have a myth that, you know, I'm going to get bulky if I lift heavy weights? So really trying to unpack where the person's coming from. And then we phase them in through movement training how they move, where their sticky points are, technique, are they comfortable with dumbbells or kettlebells? So we start them in, a, in an area of comfort and understanding rather than throwing them in the deep end. Because it's not a training block. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to do 12 weeks of resistance training and I'm going to have really good body composition. We're not looking at it that way. We're looking at, okay, what are we doing now so that when we're 60, we can still move really well and have good body composition same as when we're 80 and above. So we start the journey now and weight is going to change, but slowly. It takes time to put the weight on. So it's going to take time to, to change that body composition and get the weight off. So we start them that way. And so when we have the sleep and the resistance training down, then we'll start to look to add some high intensity interval work. So this could be sprint intervals where people are just starting to learn how to go really, really hard for 30 seconds or less. And it's a very short, sharp, session, maybe 10 minutes total, or we teach them or bring them into a true high intensity interval training class or session. And we don't do very many of them because those are hard and uncomfortable. And so until someone learns what it means to go hard and be a little bit uncomfortable and be okay with that, we don't want to put any kind of negative spin on it. But along the ways as we're going, people's nutritional approach changes because as they're starting to feel better and as their gut microbiome is changing based on the different exercises that they're doing, they start to change their nutrition intake to feel better to match what they're doing. So then the very last prong approach of the three, so we have sleep, we have the different exercises and how we phase those in. Then we look at the nutrition and it's understanding that everyone has kind of a cultish idea about nutrition instead of saying, I am following a paleo diet. They're like, I'm paleo or I'm keto or I'm IF. So we know that it's very much a cultural thing. So we look at, okay, how are we going to change the nutrition throughout the day to match the stress points? So try to bring it into more of what we call a chronobiological aspect where we're working with our circadian rhythm. Because we know from the research in the chronobiology that if we're eating throughout the day, and we're starting to taper off in the afternoon and evening. We get better sleep, which then feeds forward to all the things that we want. So it's that big three kind of big rock approach that does take time. But then we're trying to teach people how to listen to their body, how to change it instead of coming in and saying, yeah, I need a personal trainer to thrash me for 12 weeks. Because I think that's the other misconception is people think that every session has to make them feel smashed. And that's not what it's about. You can get really fantastic results by being very specific in the periodization of your resistance training. And yes, it's hard, but you don't feel smashed. If you do, then we need to see how are we going to mix it up a little bit because that's not the goal. The goal is a weight loss journey. 
to feel better, to be healthier, and to enjoy the new behaviors that you're bringing into your life. I love how you kind of say, you know, the interval training, it, it's really hard and you need to get used to that feeling because it doesn't feel good at the time because your body's sending these signals of, we can't keep this up. We can't keep this up. Like biologically, it is sending those signals. It's amazing when you actually analyze that, that our bodies do respond in that way. But I think perhaps from an athletic point of view, the first few weeks of training, you're just training how to train. You aren't actually exactly. training for results. You're training to know what to do when you walk into the gym how you're supposed to feel, how you're supposed to recover. And actually, it's not about the results then. You're just training your mind as much as your body at the start. Exactly. And I tell women, you know, women expect to be able to do a power-based resistance training session pretty soon after they start training because they understand how to train, how to move. But I'm like, you know what, to really do a proper three-by-three three heavy lift, it could take a year or more of getting that training pattern and understanding how to load in order to do those safely and effectively. So again, it's part of that journey, right? Because it is learning to train and how to feel what that feels like. And you're developing new motor patterns, neural pathways, you're getting different changes in your your your, your weight and, and that can change your biomechanic in a sense of center of gravity and the way that you're moving. So it is definitely an evolution, but it's a really fascinating evolution. 